Hello everyone, this is Mesh Slicer tutorial and let's start. I have newly created empty project and I'm going to import the plugin. Import. After importing you will see these four folders. One object slicer is actual mesh slicer code. Another is character slicer, an extension for skin mesh renderer. And two folders with samples where you have scenes. You can press play. Let's start from the beginning. Create empty scene, add an object and try to slice it. How we can do it? We could do it applying object slicer sample script. Now we have script. Assign a material. This material will be in the middle of the slice. And to trigger slicing we have to write some code. Let's create C sharp script. Slice a controller. Open it. And what we are going to do is on start try to slice our cube. So let's define the property for a cube. Try to find a component IBZ sliceable async and add using. If our object supports slicing, it has a component that implements this interface. And then we have to call slice method. Here we have to pass a plane by which it will be sliced. So the normal of the plane is up. It means that the object will be sliced horizontally. Zero means in the middle. It will be sliced in the center of our coordinate system, exactly where our cube is. And we have another parameter callback. For now we don't need any callback even so let it be now. And for example, if our object don't have such component, sliceable will be null and we have to check it or we will get an exception. Now our slicer controller is ready. Let's add it to the scene. Let's create a controller object for it. And as a target, pass our cube. Okay, so on the start, it will try to find sliceable component on our target and then if it was found it will call a slice method it will slice horizontally in the middle of our coordinate system let's play and it was sliced great maybe you notice that i'm using object slicer sample from sample folder if we will go to the documentation, you can see that I am suggesting using your own implementation that inherits directly from BZ sliceable object base or BZ sliceable character base for skin mesh render extension. To do it, you can simply copy object slicer sample, call it my slicer, for example, and get rid of anything you don't need. That's a minimum you need for your own implementation. Let's try it on our cube. Remove object slice sample and add our created script. Assign a material, press play, and it work the same. Great! Why do you need to create your own implementation is for better customization. For example, you can overwrite some methods from base class. Let's look at the documentation you can overwrite start workers method. Start worker is a method that creates new thread. If in your game you're using your thread pool, you can use this thread pool for mesh slicer. On slice finished worker thread is called when the slice is done, but within the worker thread. What does it mean? We have on slice finished method, but this method is called in the main loop. It means that if you put some code here that consumes a lot of time, it will hit a frame rate of your game. But if you overwrite this method, it will be called after the slice is done, but will not hit the frame rate. It will be executed asynchronously. Get new objects. 
is a method that creates new objects during slice. For example, if you slice an object, a cube, it will create two cubes, negative and positive part. The default implementation you can look in the base class. It takes the original object as a negative, gives it a name prefixed with a neg at the end, and creates a new object that will be prefixed with a pos. One more important thing is that slice could be processed synchronously or asynchronously. It depends on a synchronously flag on our sliceable component, but you should mark it as asynchronously only for really big objects, because if you mark small objects like this cube asynchronously, it will be processed only in the next frame, not in this, so it will only slow it down. Back to our controller. How can you use it in your own game? For example, you have a gun and you want to slice an object if you hit it from your gun. Let's do a ray cast. This is the positions where you're shooting from and the direction you're shooting to. Hitting for will be our hit result. So if it didn't hit anything, return. But if we hit the object, let's analyze does it have a sliceable async component. If it has this component, we can call the method slice. Let's check. Yes, it works. If you want your object to be sliced using a knife, for example, it should analyze collisions. Your knife should have a collider, and when it will collide with another object, it will try to get component IBZ sliceable async, and if it have, it will call a method slice and objects will be sliced with your knife. That's exactly how it was implemented in this sample scene. If you want to analyze a slice result, you cannot just put some code there and expect it to be executed after the slice. No, the slice is processed asynchronously. To process the slice result, you have to pass a callback method. And there you can analyze an object parameter. Sliced is saying was the object sliced or not. Positive and negative parts of sliced object. Mesh items, meshes that was participating in slicing. And add data. Could be anything that you can pass from your sliceable implementation there. T will have hello as a string. If from the result you want to know who did the slice, because you are not able to do this, because the method is called asynchronously, you can pass it there in lambda expression. This string variable will have everything you pass here. Let's talk about troubleshooting. For example, you have a mistake, and your slice plane is 10 units above your object, and of course your object won't be sliced. How to understand the reason why it wasn't sliced? Of course you have to debug it. Let's put a breakpoint and press a play. Let's debug into slice method and go through all the steps and find where it exits before the slice is done. Go into start slice method. There I have all renders that I have to slice. For a cube we have only one renderer. As the flag asynchronously wasn't specified, we will process this synchronously. Go into walk method and process our renderers. There is our slice method, and here is a result. Result is positive. What does it mean is all vertices of this object is on positive side, so it wasn't sliced. Let's go. As a result, it has something on positive side, but do not have anything on negative side. That means the slice result will be false. That's the reason why it wasn't sliced extensions or events. It's something like callback methods, but 
implemented as an interface. You can create your own component, implement this interface and add to your sliceable object, and the method object sliced will be executed after successful slice. Let's look at some examples. Visit fix mass smart. It fixes the center of mass for rigid body. For example, let's add a rigid body. Set kinematic to not let it fall down. And let's do our slice. Our object sliced at our fix mass smart component. And we can see this yellow sphere. This is the center of the mass. If our object was sliced, the center of mass remain unchanged. But to fix this, you can add this component. And after the slice will be done, it will call this interface method for our fix mass smart that will fix the center of mass. And now we have correct center of mass. Slice configuration. Let's open our scene with tables. We have a table with object slice sample component and some child object with renderers and colliders. For example, we want some of its children that it will not be sliced. For example, this leg. To add a configuration component to it, we could use different material for this leg when it's sliced. For this leg, we don't want it to be sliced, it will be duplicated to both sides. And that leg will be kept one, so it will not be sliced, but it will be either on negative or positive side, not sliced. Let's play. What do we have? Negative side. One object wasn't sliced, another was duplicated. And for the last we have custom material. Also from the documentation you can find the performance tests. How does it work? Some other events, you can implement your own events, some problem zones. Garbage collector for fallen object, what is it? For example, you have a scene where you have some object and you want to slice it a lot, a lot of times. And ultimately you will have very small object that possible to go through the floor and fall down infinitely, hitting performance of your game. You can see this message. It means that some objects was already collected by garbage collector because it goes through the floor and to not let it hit performance of your game, it was destroyed. That's all. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to press like and subscribe. Goodbye.